Hello, everybody. Welcome. This is Big Anklevich. And this is Rish Outfield doing an impression of the way you were talking. Yes, welcome to the Smooth Talking Podcast. That gets my goat. How to pick up chicks with Big and Rish. Step one. Ditch Big and Rish. Step two. Go find a hot chick. Wait, wait should I be writing this down? Right? It won't work for you, sir. You can't ditch Big and Rish. You could maybe ditch Big if you're stupid, but you'll never be able to ditch Rish, unfortunately. Uh, I can't remember what we were going to talk about today. We're going to talk about adventures in audiobook reading. Oh, okay. Yeah, when we... Oh, shoot. I said we would never talk about the New Media Expo again. No. Are you going to talk about it again? Well, I will say... It's like nothing else has ever happened in your entire life. Right? It's like the girl you hook up with at summer camp and you're in your 40s and you're still thinking about, yeah, I could taste the gum that she had. Sad thing is, you just made that story up. There ain't no girl like that. All right, (laughs) Mantiteo. When we went to the New Media Expo, we got to meet Brian Lincoln and Renee Chambliss, and both of them are reading audiobooks. Professionally? For pay? Yeah, in a professional capacity. And I have to admit that, uh, you know, that they had mentioned that, and I was like, oh, gee, that's what I would, I would like to, sure would like to. When can we go to the fair? And you uh, smacked me and said, yeah, we're at the fair already, you douchey little mongrel. I was just like, wow, I'd like to do that. I could do that. I've been recording audio for years, over a decade now. Uh, I've been reading stories and reading. Some of it has been good. Okay. You know, that's saying something, (laughs) I I guess. I don't know. There have been readers of audiobooks that I thought absolutely sucked to the point where it's just like, I wanted to find out what happened next. I no longer care. (laughs) <laughs> and eject, you know what I mean? You, you don't use the word eject for CDs so much anymore. And when CDs are gone, eject is not going to mean anything anymore. Ravage, like, eject. It was a cassette. Oh, well, yeah, they'll still be like ejector seats in uh, airplanes. Or Do airplanes have ejector seats? What have ejector seats? Are they called ejector seats? I don't know. For some reason, ejector seat sounds weird to me. Uh, but yeah, I think planes like F-15s and stuff have the seats that eject. And so you can say that. Eject, eject, oh, I'm going to die. But you can't say eject that CD. Well, yes, must... I think you would. You would say eject the CD, right? Yeah, but you won't because there won't be CDs to eject. Oh, okay. <laughs> Someday. So let's, let's gotta complain be about else. the destruction of our once great cassette empire. There's got to be something else that ejects. Some other use for eject, but... Who cares, really? Because that's not what we're talking about. No, what are we talking about? I think we were talking about adventures in audiobook reading. Oh, that's right. Anyway, Renee and Brian sat down and they explained to me sort of how it all worked. So I, I made, you know, remember we talked about no New Year's resolutions for me. And then eventually I said, well, maybe if I had New Year's resolutions, it would be to send my stuff out there more. And now I have this New Year's revolution. Nubus, nu, Nubian. What's a Nubian? Nubian, eh? Very nice. Very nice. Yes, I like this. It's a Nubian. <sighs> the forest doesn't work on me. I'm Watto. I don't know what the... I was going to say what kind of a being I was, but... I'm a Tolarian. My tricks don't work on me. Yeah, Only money. I I'm am a, a stereotype. I'm a character. Who cares? I thought that guy had way more personality than most of the characters in that movie. It's true, sadly. That's all right. It's better than Padme. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I thought, hey, I would like to do that. I'm going to make a resolution that I'm going to find out how that's done. I'm going to register, and I'm going to do it myself. And here it is a week later, and I have registered and uploaded some samples which i did wrong and then <laughs> there are many many books out there that take auditions you can say oh this this book looks like it would fit me and let me find their audition script and i'll read that and i'll send it to them and you know if they like me they can hire me to do the book Anyway, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about it. I already have when I first did it because the first thing I thought was Big should be doing this too because his resume is very similar to mine 
and you know we both do this kind of thing and so you know except he, for my resume includes jobs this is this is true <laughs> this is, this just is not true. hand or blow i yes i mistakenly thought i will look out for my friend <laughs> But I did go ahead and uh, and sign up for this thing and try and get you know some work out of it. And the first person to send me an acceptance was uh, can I say their name or is this is this some secretive thing? Is this what what do you think? Well, I don't know. You might want to save it just in case uh, it doesn't work out or something weird happens or whatever. Okay. I mean, the first thing I did was I would look for names of people that I had heard of that I knew because if it was somebody that I had read. Then it was like, wow, that's uh, something cool that, that I have in common with them. I, there was actually somebody who had a story on the Doonstief that had a book on there. And I thought, wow, that's really cool. Uh, do you remember in 2010 when you made this goal of getting 100 rejection letters? Uh-huh. And I, I believe you're up to... I made it to five. Oh, I was going to say you were up to zero because <laughs> the rejection letter for the first one expired <laughs> but that's cool. Five is cool. I started getting a, uh, some rejections, and uh, th- for the most part, they were nice. It's like you know, my I, I no longer have the I've already sold the rights, or I already hired somebody to do a book in this series, and I would like them to do all the books, you know. And so it's got a, the same voice or f you, you know. They they, they mostly said nice, nice things. And basically, once you've gotten the contract, the go ahead, they send you the full file of the book. And if you're me, you cannot open that file. (laughs) So you have to download that file, which you cannot open, forward it to your laptop and open it on the laptop and read it off of that, which I've done eight times now, I think. I then need to record the first 15 minutes. And it's like an arbitrary 15 minutes of the book and stop at 15. I don't know if it has to be exact. I wasn't, I'm not an exact kind of guy. It's just like, okay, I'll go to the end of the chapter or I'll go to, okay, where it feels like a good stopping point. I don't know. I'm just too much of a creative person and not a technical person. Then you're supposed to take that 15 minutes and polish it, edit it, you know, remove all of the background noise, remove all of the lip smacking noises and the big breaths at the beginning of sentences and, you know, whatever there might be, all the many, many mistakes and then get that 15 minutes all polished up and professional quality and send it to them for their notes. And then they will give you notes. And if not, I guess you just continue on with the full file. And there's a deadline when you're supposed to get it to them and, and all that. All of these things seemed very doable for me until I had recorded that 15 minutes and started to edit it and noticed how many little noises and stutters and breaths and there was a friggin buzzing noise that started to happen and i i didn't know where the buzzing noise was and it, it was intermittent it would start and then it would stop and I, I still don't know if i'm getting a signal somewhere that's interfering or if there's a short in the cord that was my guess because you and i would sometimes have shorts yeah in i the think cords. we used to get buzzing noises you know i was thinking on the way over here about that one thing you might want to do each time you start it up is make sure you have a good fresh battery because the battery running low i think used to cause us problems too back when we used to use that get up that you have at your house for our actual podcast recording okay i hadn't thought of that but i did change the battery right before i started because i had made that same mistake you made of leaving it on all night one time. <laughs> but I also made this another mistake. You know, and this is something that I've always hated. Uh, yeah, I can't keep a job because I can't follow rules that I think are stupid. And there were a bunch of like very arbitrary in between you saying chapter one and the boy was, you know, on the beach. You have to have exactly 3.5 seconds of silence. And that kind of stuff is just like, wow. 3.5, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. I'll start talking when I feel like it's time to start talking. And I asked Renee about that and she said, dude, toe the line. Do as they say because they're looking for an excuse to reject you. And I was just like, oh, it's high school again. And so I sent, I sent you the file of, of, of a couple of these 15-minute things and you levelated one. And levelate is where you take all of the noise and somehow with a machine, it balances it. So the things that are quiet, it makes louder. The things that are loud, it makes quiet. And what it did for my file was make it absolutely unlistenable. 
And I listened to it and I was just like, oh my gosh, I can't even send this to the people. I, I This wouldn't pass muster the first episode of the Dune Steve. <laughs> it sucks that bad. And Brian had said, you are going to be competing against professional audiobook guys in a studio. So it has to sound as good as, as it possibly can. So that depressed me. I didn't know what to do. There was a second file, and I don't know if I had you level it or not. Or maybe I didn't level it the second one. I just sent her my file after I'd gone through and removed all the damn breaths and just noises that you don't realize that you make with your mouth or with just breathing or your nose until you're listening for them. And I, hopefully it won't interfere with me actually editing Dune Steef stuff because, oh my gosh, if I have to edit out that noise I just made from now on, we'll never have another episode. It would be like 2011, the first half. Oh, wait, it was the second half. Which half sucked? 2011? I don't know. That was a long time ago. Oh, man. 2012. That's right. That, that, <laughs> that was the year that sucked. So, I, you know, I didn't know what to do, but I, I did have a clean recording that I sent in to the client. Is that what you say? Or am I the client? They're the client, They're the I guess. the client, I suppose, in your case. And uh, today I got back the notes on it, and uh, I guess there was buzzing. She noted the time code every single time she heard this buzzing. And I thought that was the clean one that I didn't notice that I didn't notice the buzzing shoot. And so I, you know, I just like sort of threw my hands up in the air and I didn't know what to do, but I, we will try a new cord. And if that doesn't fix it, I guess I'll have to borrow one of your microphones. When we first met Renee and she was talking about making her a little recording closet, her recording dungeon and all that stuff. I was just like, wow, we've never had to do that. Because we don't care how good it sounds. <laughs> We're always going to be content over sound quality kind of guys, right? Or content over... I don't know. I can't think of anything else. We are quality over quality kind of guys. But now I'm thinking, wow, you know, I may have to end up doing something like that. Because, I, you know, I'd like to make money from this. It's something that I'm passionate about. I do it anyway for free. And I enjoy it. And I think I'm good. When you have that many things going for it and there's a potential dollar sign, then jump on it, right? Yeah. I think you need to make a blanket for it. That's what you need to make. I, isn't that what she originally did? Yeah. Basically, she had a tent that had blankets hanging from it or something. And I think that's what you need to do. You could watch that episode of uh, Community just for maybe some tips on how to make a good blanket for it. All right. But <laughs> somebody once, I think, said just use mic stands put them on all the corners and then just drape blankets over it. You could probably do it in a different way. I'm not sure exactly what, but just, yeah, some two by fours and, or even some two by twos would probably be plenty. You could collapse it down and put it away and then pop it back out and set it up and read inside a little tent. It'd be so cute. And you could wear your PJs when you're in it. Yeah, the, all of these sound, things sound good, but if there's that buzzing sound, <laughs> I'm screwed no matter what. <laughs> Anyhow, so I, I told her I'll record it again, and then I'll record the other one again, and then I'll send you the 15 minutes again. Although part of me is just like, at this point, I should just give up. It's like everything <laughs> else in life. You're going to win. Don't give up, man. Something that Renee said that I said I wasn't going to talk to you about on the air because it's just too mean, but I don't care now, is originally, I guess, this company didn't have, they didn't allow self-published books. You know, it's just like you had to have a, a book publisher or something like that behind you because they wanted to keep the quality high or seem professional. Or I mean, it's for audible.com. So, I mean, everybody who has ever listened to a podcast knows what audible.com is because they have sponsored all of them. Except for us. Well, except for us, but <laughs> no one has sponsored us <laughs> except Siri. But now they have started to allow people to self-publish their own things and to have people record their books. And in auditioning for some of these, it's clear that this is somebody who has just published their own book and... Maybe the quality isn't quite as high as something that, you know, Random House is going to do or, or Abby Hilton is going to do or something like that. And so I wondered about it. I was like, well, do I bother on something? If, the, if, if it's not a good book, do I record it anyway on the off chance that it will bring me money? Well, the off chance seems like a, an off chance, if you know what I'm saying. I don't know. The amount of 
time you're going to have to put into recording and editing. Not just recording. I mean, maybe just recording it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but you have to edit it down and get rid of the lip smacks and the and the farting noises and all that stuff that you always make while you're recording. I don't know why you can't just stop doing the armpit farts, but you still do them every time. And that's going to take a lot of time. That's going to be like 20 to 40 hours. And if you don't really expect there to be sales coming from it, then it's probably not worth it. I don't know. That's just my thinking. Seems like you want to at least get a story where when you read it, you're like, this is stuff that people will want to hear and want to listen to. I think you're a good enough judge. You're a editor. You're also a consumer. So you should know. You're also a writer for that matter. You should, you know what's likely to uh, work and what's not going to work. And yeah, I mean, it's pretty obvious. I think you could see what is close enough that you can overlook some of the small faults and then you know, the stuff that just is terrible. Yeah, I would give it a pass because you're going to have to put in like 40 hours or more to make this file. I mean, shoot, it almost takes 40 hours just to put an episode of the Doonstief together. So doing a whole audiobook, that's like eight, ten episodes of the Doonstief. Don't do it. Yeah, but I don't think I would need, it. I don't think I need to edit in other voices or music or sound effects. True. Which do take a, I mean, for me, the editing in other voices takes so, so long. <laughs> and another thing that I discovered in doing all these auditions is somebody's idea for an audition can wildly vary from somebody else's. There'll be somebody that's got like four paragraphs, read this. And then I started to, re I recorded one yesterday that was 23 minutes long. It was the first two chapters of their book. And by the time it was like nine minutes into it, I was just like, wow, okay, well, it must be the end. Now, what? It's still not the Okay. Oh, I'm only halfway through. Well, I got to do it now because I've wasted <laughs> 11 minutes of my life. And I just thought, if I don't get the job for reading 23 freaking minutes of this thing... <laughs> <laughs> reading and editing 23 yeah, minutes or whatever what it's just like say. mother read for 20 minutes then after that you got 40 minutes or more to edit it down but uh, today i got another their acceptance from another guy and, and I, I got the impression this guy was a self-published guy too in fact part of me got the impression that he was like a 17 year old kid who just got a netflix uh, subscription and he's just like wow italian horror movies are gory I'm going to make one. He actually sent me notes on my audition of, you know, it's like, you know, this part right here. And it's like, and I, and I wanted you to read this line differently, which I was just like, wait, what? That's an audition. It's, it's, it's like telling us that there was a, a bad sound effect or a bad music cue in an episode of the Doonesty from 2011 or, you know what I mean? That was a long time ago, 2011. Oh, I'm sorry. 2012 was the, bad, the year that sucked. <laughs> I, and I complained to you about it, but then the guy sent me a, a contract, so he did want me to read the book. So that made it okay. He's like, oh, okay, so you just want me to, the next time I read it, do this better. But uh, for the one that I did, like, to the 23 minutes, and you got to understand that 23 minutes edited is like a half an hour of reading. Um, I just, and an hour and a half of editing. It is. It's, it's, it's insanely tedious. On that one, I just thought, well, I'm just going to continue from the 23-minute mark if this guy accepts my audition. But then again, maybe there's that pesky buzzing sound. Although I didn't <laughs> hear any of it in any of the auditions that I sent. That's the weird thing. It was only in these 15-minute samples that I sent. So I don't know what it was. I just hope it goes away forever. It was actually a bee that was circling the microphone. <laughs> and then it would fly away for a while and then it would come back and circle again. It's, that's what it sounded like. <laughs> but I, I thought it would be really neat if, you know, I actually put out a couple of these and you could say and when, during a regular episode, hey, I, you, if, you, if you like me and you want to support me or whatever the deal is, you know, you can buy this book on Audible and I read it and it's about this. And uh, yeah, they want you to tell all of your friends, I guess, you know, they, they, because the more people that download it, the more money they make, I, I suppose. I've never signed up for Audible. I don't have an iPod or any of that stuff. And, you know, I listen to audiobooks most. Uh, now that's almost all I listen to. But in the days 
when Audible was something I considered, it was all just podcasts. And all the podcasts I listened to were free. <laughs> and so I never signed up. How about you? Did, were you ever tempted to sign I did t- do their trial. Oh, you did? That everybody would say, oh, go to audible.com slash podcast or whatever. Slash clown pod. Yeah, I did do their trial and uh, you get to download a book. I think I may have downloaded several. I think I got a few of some of my favorite audiobooks. I thought this is one that I will want my kids to be able to have. And so I downloaded it and you're able to burn it off onto CDs like one time or two times, or I don't remember what they have, like a really limit that you can do that with. And then, uh, of course you have the file that you can just play whenever you want, but it's a something else kind of file. It's not like an MP3. Cause it's, I mean, it comes like I downloaded the book and it was two files. It was like one six hour file. And then another six hour file got me the whole book. Huh. I don't remember even what the format was, what .jrt file or something like that. I have no idea what it was. Can't remember. But yeah, I thought it was really cool. And back then when we did it, Audible was still fairly new. It didn't have as many titles at all as it has now. I mean, it's just exponentially grown since then. And I'm sure with this ACX doing all their productions, it's only going to keep growing exponentially to where pretty much any book you're going to want you'll be able to get an audio of, which seems pretty cool to me. I I would like to do it. I know, I think my brother-in-law has an Audible account and he downloads audiobooks all the time to listen to. Because, yeah, I, I really enjoy it. And my library, I mean, your local library has a great selection of audiobooks. Mine has a crap selection. I, I basically just have to look at something and say, yeah, I guess that might be interesting. And just go with it. And I've listened to a few books where I'm just like, man, why did I listen to this whole thing? It's terrible. But, you know, I'd like to be able to have Audible so that I could just do that. Unfortunately, I, I so flat broke that I can barely manage to afford having a television signal coming into my house. So, so far I haven't managed to get the Audible account yet, but it's in my future. I swear to you that someday I will have it. Swear to me. But you wouldn't use Audible now because you use your commute not to listen to audiobooks, but to podcast and write. <laughs> I suppose that's true. I, anyhow, I guess this is something I wanted to talk about. But the, as this disaster writes itself, hopefully I'll have more to talk about and I'll be able to make an announcement of, oh, hey, here's my first reading. And I think it went well. Or try and figure out whose voice I'm doing for the grandpa, you know, whatever it is. But the the feedback that I've gotten, people like that I can do different voices. They like that I can sound like a child or an old person. And so, you know, because that's something I do well, I thought that this is something that I could do well. I've just got to master the technical aspect of it. I mean, maybe this is just something that I need to do enough times that it becomes second nature and I don't even have to think about it. But uh, let's yeah. talk about movies next time. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm sure you'll get there. I think... Uh... With time and practice, and I'm sure maybe even your first few actual books, maybe there'll be a time where you look back at them and think, boy, I don't know, I wish I could leave those off my list. Maybe you won't. Maybe uh, you'll think they're just as great as anything else that you do. But you know, that's kind of the way it goes. You got to learn a new trick and a year or two from now, you'll be an old pro and you'll have done 30 books and people will be like, oh gosh, he's got another one to tell us about. I think that would be great. And I have been an actor, not a real actor, but, uh, you know, I'm sure every actor who makes his living through acting has been in a couple of stinkers or has put in a performance where they're like, I hope nobody ever puts that on my Thalberg Award reel. And I've told you many times that Joss Whedon used to come into the video store where I worked and we had a great big cardboard cutout of Alien Resurrection. And on, there on the bottom, it said, written by Joss Whedon. And he asked he, he asked me personally, oh, hey, would you do me a favor? Take that thing down. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? He got paid for it. He did work. And he felt like it didn't come out well or whatever. But, you know, you got to feed your family somehow or yeah. feed yourself, feed the addiction somehow. <laughs> and so uh, that's what I'm trying with this. Good luck on that addiction. All right, folks. Thanks for listening to the show. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we'll be back again with more 
rootin' tootin' good times. Yeehaw! Next time. Thanks for listening. See you later. See you later, y'all. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons non-commercial 3.0 license. Boy, they must really think a lot of themselves.